Hi everybody, welcome again to F This Movie. My name is Patrick. My name is Doug. Today we have a very special episode of F This Movie for you. Uh, it's the first ever installment of <laughs> Ask F This Movie. You tweeted your questions to at F This Movie. You wrote them on Facebook at facebook.com slash F This Movie. Maybe you visited our website at fthismovie.net with all the burning questions that you wanted to ask Patrick and Doug. That's us, Patrick and Doug. Shameless promoter, mentioning our Twitter, our Facebook, our website. That's three. Fthismoviepodcast at gmail.com. There you go. Email us all your questions, although at this point it's too late because I got the questions written down here from Twitter, from Facebook. Without further ado, Patrick, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right into it, okay? Yeah. Leo Logan writes, what is your favorite good performance by a usually terrible actor? Patrick? Ooh, I should have thought some of these through ahead of time. <laughs> okay, I got one. Go on. Um, or start. Not yes. go on, but please. Just <laughs> begin. Begin. <laughs> go on beginning. Right. Begin to go on. Do you need more blue note cards in your life is my point. <laughs> I have the answer written right here. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll go with um, Chris Klein. Mm. In election. Chris Klein, usually a terrible actor, in election, every line he delivers is gold. Uh, and I think that has to do more with good casting than with good acting. I think... It's his, a case of that he's actually Chris Klein pr playing Everything Chris that's Klein. bad about him as gotcha. an actor works for that performance. But in any other movie, with the exception of Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li. <laughs> I love this job. He's just like, everything is like on coke. I mean, he's obviously on coke. Uh-huh, right? I'm going to say Owen Wilson in Midnight in Paris. Interesting. I'm not a huge Owen Wilson fan. No. He's not even a terrible actor, mm -hmm. but I'm never uh, really on board with him. I thought uh, he was great. He was a, a Woody Allen proxy in Midnight in Paris. It was great. Haven't you been smoking peyote for six straight days? And couldn't some of this maybe be in your mind? Um, I know a lot of people say Adam Sandler in Punch Drunk Love. That's a pretty obvious one because he makes grown-ups and grown-ups too, which suck and Punch Drunk Love is great. Go! Vin Diesel in Saving Private Ryan. I'll see your Vin Diesel in Saving Private Ryan. Iron and Giant? I'll raise you, no. That's cheating. Riddick, everyone. Out in theaters in September. Riddick hasn't come out yet. That's cheating also. It's not. Iron Giant is cheating. Like, I can see in the dark. He's all like, uh, Superman. Yeah, he's all like, who turned out the lights? <laughs> he's all banging chain yes. against this. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's what Riddick. That's how Riddick, Riddick do. Everyone, that's what Riddick. Guess who's excited to see Riddick? Uh, let's go to uh, <laughs> that's this guy right there. Riddick. Me, I'm all, and I'm all Riddick. <laughs> uh, Chris Reyes writes, "What is your favorite and least favorite Christopher Nolan film?" Now, uh, Chris, we've actually answered this on a previous podcast, but I was a game of best worst. Let's answer it again. I will right. say Inception is his best. Yes, and his least best. Because he's made some awesome movies. I wouldn't say there's any terrible movies in the bunch. Um, but Dark Knight Rises is probably not my favorite. Caveat, I, m depending on how I'm feeling, I might put on Dark Knight before I put on Inception. Mm, Inception, I like Dark Inception is the best. And Dark Knight Rises, I think, is the worst. But I'm just saying in terms of like what I feel like going to on the DVD shelf. Inception. That's Dark Knight. Next question! Dark <laughs> and here we go. Uh, okay, Turning Green slash Dr. David Banner who has a real name on our website, but I forget it right now, um, on Twitter writes, you've talked about Back to the Future and Jaws as perfect movies. Mm. What are some others, and what constitutes a perfect film? Patrick. Uh, the Godfather, I think, is a perfect movie. What constitutes a perfect... Uh, that's, that's No mistakes! Uh, yeah, right. The Wizard of Oz, I think, is a perfect movie. Okay. Uh, I would say that uh, John Carpenter's Halloween is a perfect movie. Now, having said that... In most instances, except for that I do love Wizard of Oz and Back to the Future, I like those other movies too, but I think in most instances, I would rather watch a flawed movie than a perfect one. Uh, good answers, all incorrect. Okay. The right answer, Varsity Blues. Okay. Boom. But I don't want your life. John Petrilla writes... You're cute. 
but you know you are Mox. <laughs> this is a long question, so bear with me. All right. Why do you think it is that there's been a general shift towards trailers showing essentially the whole film in 2 minutes 30 seconds? I remember seeing the teaser for Reception, and it blew my mind because I had no idea what to expect from the film. But the final trailer basically spelled out most of the major beats. And I don't know if it's pandering to general audiences because the trailer for The Artist did basically the same thing, So What Gives. The question, by the way, is So What Gives. <laughs> uh, I don't uh, know if you're the a trailer expert. I, I am the expert. Field that. Uh, a serious question is I think that numbers are down and uh, profits are off, so they're giving away more in the trailers to attract people to the uh, theaters, but... I don't know if there is a right or a wrong answer, because some trailers kind of still keep things a mystery, so... Very few, very few. Very few. I agree with you, though. I think movies are marketed now out of fear. They're very afraid of not being number one at the box office the weekend it comes out, so they figure if we give you every beat of the movie, hopefully you'll come see it. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> you just inherited a big problem. Brian Alford on Twitter writes, Also, Patrick, why do you love Gabby Hoffman so much? Mm, that's an easy one. <laughs> now and then. John Murphy on Twitter writes, one of our fans, John Murphy, we appreciate him. Other than Tarantino, because that one's too obvious. <laughs> Does he say it like that? He's Dennis very Miller? cocky. <laughs> Who are your top five favorite directors working today, or mm. possibly just some of your favorites, <laughs> if you'd rather answer it that way? I'd rather answer it that way. Thank you for the option. Steven Soderbergh is great, but uh, he's retired. He's done. He's all Behind the candelabra. Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, always awesome, even when I don't love his movies. Edgar Wright, I would put yes, in there. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, you know, Martin Scorsese and Steven Spielberg are still great directors, but it's they're kind of hit or miss. Yeah. I'll say, uh, I like Tom Teakfair a lot. I love Run, Little Run. Uh, I even like Princess and the Warrior, but also his segments in... Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas, which you could make an argument that the other segments were better, but I think that the other segments benefited from the balance of the, um, he brought to the... <laughs> uh-huh, right? I'll say Brad Bird's great based on Ghost Protes. I look yeah. forward to his next thing. I so wish he did Star Wars, but you can't always get what you <laughs> want. Um, I'm sure I'm leaving a bunch of people out. Canadian Saul Ott. Um, asks us... Wow, all the way from Canada, everyone. Me and my friend, hashtag Avatar, are wondering, how come you don't like 3D movies? Mm, I see what you did there, trying to use my love of Avatar against me. I don't like 3D movies because I've never seen 3D improve a movie. 3D! Ah, oh, the porn is popping in your face into 3D! They make it dimmer, they make my eyes hurt, they give me a headache, it's a gimmick, it costs more... It's never been... That's all you need. Well yeah. said. Thank you. Brad McCarty on Facebook. Even writes, Avatar, by the way. Brad McCarty writes, do you like me? I do. Yeah, he's, he's all right. I he's do. He's good people. Yeah. Uh, the last question submitted by Brad Lang, our Australian friend. So it goes from Canada to Australia. We are multinational. Yes. He writes, current trend equals throw everything at it that fits in a question mark formula <laughs> a qu aiming for words. dollar sign 1B. <laughs> What's next versus you what do you strike? think what the trend... <laughs> Listen, everyone, Doug's out of the picture, and so this is a perfect time for me to talk about Riddick. you got Vin Diesel, you've got aliens coming out of the ground, most importantly, you have Starbuck. Thanks for watching, everyone! Off. That's it? <laughs>